Bruce. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is September 21st, 2022. Also known as the day after my birthday. I think Libra start tomorrow, right? Thank you, everybody, for joining me on this fine Wednesday to talk about news. Must be something happening. Must be. If you've been living under a rock for the past literally three days, you've missed like 10 weeks worth of news. And we're going to try to squeeze it in her. Squeeze it. And get it all out where we're at as of now. Because it is constantly fucking evolving every day. Every day, more shit. More shit. And it's been like 72 hours. Shit. God. News <sighs> is so juicy. That's right. God. All right. First. All right. Yo, yet last week was the like kind of slow week. Right? Last week it was like fan bites closing down. What's fan bite? Ah, uh, you know. And then like EVGA. That was like the only big news. EVGA. No longer can NVIDIA. And then this week it's like, like they all waited. They all waited. <laughs> like last week news sucks. And then they're like, bam. Everything's happening this week. First. I'll do all this on Friday. God. Actually, Friday we're going to be doing a... um. We're going to be doing a, a Hot Ones style with actual Hot Ones. This season sauce is provided by Lack. Uh, she's going to be coming down to my place and uh, we're going to be doing some hot, so hot sauce stream. Um, and she said she's going to be uh, taste testing all of them with me. Right? That's what she said. She said totally what she said. Anyways. <laughs> oh, shit. So that's going to be Friday. I'm still trying to figure out where we're going to do it. I don't know. We're here, here, downstairs, kitchen. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure it out. I'll just put a camera up somewhere little microphone uh and then we'll go from there so spicy news on friday probably not gonna do news on that day although it was a pretty funny idea to cover news while you're doing it but this is a lot of prep so anyways first up let's talk about let's talk about an episode that i did mm, probably a few weeks ago months ago now called uh how now curacao we went pretty deep into looking into uh, stake.com, other bets.com, whatever.com, gambling, online gambling sites that were all basically, they all existed under essentially one umbrella that was house, that, that was uh, a one umbrella license, a master license that was, um, uh, that was being housed or being uh, held in Curacao. Uh, so, you know, Curacao is an island. It's not in the United States. It's not. It's you know, it's basically one of those small, small like countries where they they basically uh, uh, make a lot of their business and their economy is like hinged on like you know money coming from other countries, whether they're holding the money or they're start do selling business licenses or whatever. Uh, and so a lot of people go to these things in order to get these um uh go to these go to these countries in order to get these easy to access uh, licenses for gambling or for whatever else. And so we covered that pretty extensively. Um, I actually have some links here just to share so we can kind of all be on the same page. Um, for example, there is this, uh, let me see, yeah, here it is. So this is the license that I found, uh, that belongs, that basically houses like the majority of the sub licenses that, um, this site's loading right now. There we go. Uh, for like stake.com and, um, let me see, uh, let's see, actual license, Curacao, Curacao.com. Uh, and a couple others. So offshore accounts come to mind. That's exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. Felt like a year plus ago. Yeah. When did this episode come out? Uh. Wow. Actually, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We covered this in June. Uh. June twenty fifth. Uh. Two thousand twenty one. So that was the day that we of the recording of uh, of that episode. Um. And you know we found what we discovered was that a lot of these big streamers were getting like fucking hell of money in order to. Uh, in order to pimp, uh, um, you know, these stake.com sites. So they're getting paid, not just a salary, but they're also getting paid, uh, 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 reimbursed for their for their uh, their losses from gambling, which completely defeats the purpose of gambling. Completely, 100% defeats the purpose of gambling. Uh, we saw this with Aiden Ross. This is an old clip from, again, from last year, uh, where he, he shows here at Discord, just briefly shows, shows his Discord, where he's talking to Dual Bits, which is another stake.com style site, uh, gambling site, and he says, I offered you guys $2 million, $2 million a month, and blah, 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 all this stuff. 
Um, and so we see that, yeah, this, Adam Ross is making like a ton of money. Uh, we also have a clip from uh, XQC. <clears throat> XQC also uh, showing that, um, I mean, very briefly pops up, but also showing that, oh, I can't believe this clip is still up. <laughs> it's right here. Let me see. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, maybe it's somewhere else. Anyways, so we see that, uh, uh, we know that, let me see if I can find this fucking thing here. Boom. How do I go back on this trip? Anyways, we'll just, we'll just, just trust me, bro. All right. <laughs> Uh, this is this is something that we covered extensively before, and it just basically uh, has not stopped for a year now. It's just continued to, f to flourish, I guess. Uh, continued to uh, um, uh, to grow. We've had tons of stories of people coming out having issues. We could look at here, Sully Gnome. Sully Gnome shows us that right here, slots is the number one, or sorry, number nine uh, position um, <clears throat> in the past ninety days. Okay, so the past 90 days, uh, slots is the number nine most watched category on Twitch. And categories include, you know, like just chatting, you can see League of Legends. I mean, these are all like huge games. And then there's slots, which is beating out Fortnite uh, in the past 90 days. Uh, and Call of Duty Warzone and Fall Guys, I guess. <laughs> and World of Warcraft. I mean, just, just, just think about that, like from that perspective. Okay. But if we take a look at the most uh, streamed games, uh, this list now looks basically the same, except we're missing slots. I mean, most everything's about the same. We have uh, Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Just Chatting, League of Legends, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Warzone, Minecraft. And over here, we have basically the same games, right? Except gambling, slots, is... Fuck, can you find it now? Oh, yeah, it's number 63. Yeah, it's not even on this part of the list. <laughs> number 63 down here. Uh, oh, it's fucking... 67, 67, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so so what we're seeing is, is, a, is a very disproportionate number of people who are uh, who are watching gambling streams versus actually uh, doing gambling streams themselves. So it's, it's essentially very much a spectator uh, game if you will. Uh, and a very, 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 very big one. Uh, you remember when Twitch was video games? Yeah, lots has changed, man. Um, see, if these people are making so much money, how can not afford a second monitor to keep their incriminating messages on? I don't know, man. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So people get like really big on, on like, you know, on YouTube or Twitch or whatever, on whatever medium before they even know how to operate a fucking phone. So, so yeah, it happens. Uh, Rim World should be higher. Oh man, I know they should, I guess. Um, Take take uh, any live content that's entertaining and doesn't advertise something addictive. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep this ball moving here. Uh, so yes, I did cover this extensively previously on an episode "How to Curse Out" of of the news, um, and it seems to have reached ahead finally. Very, very much later, <laughs> we finally reached ahead, and it started with uh, with an admission of uh, of uh, guilt, I guess, by a streamer Sliker, who um, issued a, as you can see here, a tearful apology. Uh, I watched the VOD on this, uh, where he says that he uh, has essentially scammed people out of, uh, hundreds of people out of like hundreds of thousands of dollars. The number was up to 380 something thousand or something, or 400,000 or something. Um, uh, so yeah, it was just basically a, uh, a lot of fucking money. It was easily the biggest, the biggest and most upfront scam, like fraud scam, wire fraud, uh, that we've seen on Twitch. I don't think this has happened period ever, not to the scale. Um, crocodile tears, but uh, Slacker is addicted to sports gambling and that is allowed on Twitch. So, okay, we're gonna get there, dude. So, so, Sword Reacher does outright stop all forms of gambling on the platform. You fuck bitches, people living on the rocks, all right? Think of people on the rocks. <laughs> So yeah, I watched through, I watched through his vod. Uh, he, he talks about uh, his addiction and everything. He says that he started gambling with skins on one of those CS:GO sites, and then he moved on to gambling uh, with real money. Uh, and this he started when he was young, of course. I mean, he's he's still young. Um, uh, and he says he promises to pay the money back. <laughs> but we we know that's a lie. Um, he got a hundred thousand. Purely from from train wrecks. So from one streamer alone, he got a hundred thousand. Uh, and so there is just tons and tons of tons of people coming out of the woodwork now, um, saying that you know he. I mean, here's an example of Harris OTG. He says, uh, he, and, and a lot of them are bringing receipts. They're saying over the last year, I lent Slicker uh, thirty thousand dollars, and I've I've seen none of it back. I never really knew how much 
uh, how many people he did this to until today. He told me so many times he'd pay me back, but I saw nothing. I attached just two out of 80 Discord screenshots of him lying about paying me. And uh, and here's basically you know, his archive of this. And then, of course, he has plenty of this. He's like, so when can you send it? Man, sword up and down the Quran. Said, voila, like 50 times. And then, then still lie. Like, bro, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I didn't lie, I sent it. Issue came up, 1.6K, I didn't cancel it, and I said, yeah. So anyway, so so imagine like you lend somebody money for whatever reason you lend somebody on internet money um, or somebody like you know like this money, um, and uh, you're asking for it back. You Obviously, you're keeping logs and all that stuff because you want your fucking money back, especially when it's $30,000. Um, and then you find out later that this person has been you know, basically hitting up everyone for the same thing. You know, for money and uh, not paying back a single person. Um, so uh, is Hashu also? Hashu uh, also had her own uh, Even experience I'm really with it. Sad and that I'm really depression, but at least I need to try. But he just said he even didn't try. You, you know what? Money was even doesn't matter at the time. I just said because he just. I'll mute it from there, but she's obviously upset because uh, she feels like she's been lied to. She's like she's been betrayed. Like she's been betrayed. I mean, Slacker knows a lot of people. Like he's part of he's part of communities and shit that you know are pretty tightly bound. And so I mean, hence how he got so much money being loaned to him. Uh, and so people are again are just finding out that they've been scammed out of money. And that was pretty much it. Now, honestly, I took I took I took my initial take on this was like, wow, man, you guys got this is your first time getting scammed because I grew up being scammed a lot. <laughs> and so it was like for me, I was just like, I was like, yeah, this is you got, you got scammed, you know, whatever. And then like it kept on escalating and it kept on escalating and it kept on escalating. And I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people who are getting scammed for the first time. And so this level of like betrayal and response is stuff that you would expect to see. Of course, people are like really upset. They're like, wow, holy shit. This person who who came to me and says, I have a huge problem. Can you help me? Something depression. And then you find out they lied. They lied to your face in a way. Um See, I mean, games are addictive enough to don't need money scams in, in my games. Can I borrow 1K from you, Mike? You can trust me. Hey, I got you, man. I'll send you some. No problem. Uh, <laughs> why would anyone give that much money in the first place? Well, you got to also uh, not think with your own wallet in this case, right? Like, yes, for me, I, I don't have $30,000 to just loan to somebody. It's, what the fuck? <laughs> I have, I have, I have that, I have debt in that amount, you know? <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, people, you know, some of these folks might have, like, make $30,000 in, like, a couple weeks. So for them, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I'll loan them some money. Or they have money saved up because they're making such stupid money on social, on social media or, or uh, streaming platforms that they're, uh, they just have, you know, money saved up because they just can't simply spend it enough because they're spending all their time actually streaming to make that main money. Um, listen, chat, I'm locked out of my bank. Can you please, please, please let me borrow 1K? I need to urge urgently. That's right. Western Union, whatever, money orders or whatever. I've heard of other cases offline where people took out loans to give money to help someone else. Me too, actually. This happened recently to a family member where they were approached in a parking lot by somebody who uh, uh, said that they needed uh, they needed money for whatever, uh, and it was a lot of money, and they, they provided proof that they had the money to pay the person back in the form of, like, I don't know, on the app or something like that, showed that they had money in the bank, and this person gave this person the money, and then uh, and then the person disappeared, and that was pretty much the end of it, and they were scammed out of... God damn, it was like it was like something like twenty five thousand dollars or something crazy, something crazy. But you know, like I said, like scams happen a lot and all the time. You know, and, and but if you're the, if this is your first time getting scammed, it's painful. I remember my first time getting scammed. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed, and I was like, "What the fuck? I can't trust anybody." Dang. <laughs> but you know, some people, man, they somehow manage to skirt being scammed. I don't know what it is, and then and then they get hit, and it's painful, dude. It sucks. And so, uh, uh, so we have um, a. Let me see. Here we go. So we have a couple more messages here. This was provided by Jake Sucky. Um, <laughs> Jake Lucky, but his his tag is Jake Sucky, um, and it shows here. There's just plenty. You can ask for a huge ass fucking favor. Don't hate me, King. Sure, keep it personal, please. But basically, my account got locked, and I need money in my PayPal to pay some bills. Da 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 da. da. Then he started a call. Last four minutes, probably to get some money. Uh, he said, yo, bro, can I another $600? Let's just hit you back. Give me seven days. You know, basically just, just, you know, there's evidence everywhere just showing that this person is, uh, uh that Sliker's trying to get money from basically anywhere he can. Um, 
He was ben- he was ben- betting on I think uh, primarily tennis matches. Just 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 keep that in mind. So tennis matches. It was this wasn't related to to stake.com and all that stuff. Just so you guys know. Like I know we set that up because guess the gambling we're talking about gambling, right? But that wasn't his involvement. His involvement was uh was gambling on uh on actual sports events. Um <clears throat> uh, what place would let you pay a bill via PayPal? Oh, I, I could yeah, I think I've paid something not bills though. Oh yeah, I actually have paid some bills with PayPal. I think, uh, I think his game was also off screen. Yes, it's true. So yeah, he wasn't this this his situation. While yes, it is gambling, um, was not actually related to the types of gambling that we all have serious issues with on the Twitch platform. Um, but technically, it's still gambling though. Um, so it's uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of takes from people that you know previously we just used to stream there. This is Devin Nash, and he says the issue of gambling on Twitch should have been resolved months ago with a platform wide ban. We find out now that it's over a year ago that it should have been banned because we talked about this over a year ago. I left Twitch over this issue and still feel the exact same as it did eight months ago when I really took the stand. Gambling is horrible for the platform. Get rid of it. Gambling is damaging to young Twitch u- uh, users, bad for legitimate advertisers, and brings down the quality of the site as a whole. It's not about the money. Twitch is just too bureaucratic to take a stand against it. Good people work there, but corralled by bad leadership. And so it says there, Twitch isn't making any money off gambling. They're losing on site-wide CPMs. Legitimate advertisers don't want their ads served next to online casino ads. They don't want to support advertising gambling to kids. The decision is costing Twitch in cultural equity and real revenue. And it's true. This is the shit that we talked about again like a year ago. It's like these are the things that, that Twitch needs to really look out for, man. Like you know, the gambling on these sites, you know, granted, it's not on the site. <laughs> but still, um, if he was gambling on Twitch, there may have been people skeptical about why he needs the money. Yes, exactly. That's true. They would have absolutely been more skeptical for sure. Um, <clears throat> and so it's just, there's, you know, lots, there's, this is totally, totally entangled now. Uh, Slikers, Slikers gambling uh, uh, issue and revelations here that everybody's now part of um, has now become uh, synonymous with the gambling that exists currently on Twitch. And again, you know, they were not technically related, besides just being gambling. Um, <clears throat> what happened now? You missed. <laughs> uh, and we we, uh, <laughs> we see that uh, some people were starting to get their stuff back. Actually, some people were starting to get some money back. We had um, uh, XQC. Oops. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> XQC. Let me grab that link again. Um, was teaming up with uh, uh, with uh, Ludwig, and he says, "We are aware. We are aware about this situation and the victims." I fucking fucking nerd on away. It's fucking all caps everything. And the victims who were scammed out of their hard earned money, heartbreaking me and Ludwig, uh, will be trying uh, our best to get money back to those people. This is about the victims, only them. This will take time. It's three hundred plus thousand dollars. Um. Why are we yelling? That's all this fucking dude does is yell. It's fucking weird. Um, and then uh, we also have, let me see, uh, uh, we have, uh, so yeah, he's basically saying that he's going to work with Ludwig where he gets money back. Uh, um, Ludwig also, you know, obviously, you know, he said, yeah, yeah, we're, we're trying to do our best to get it. Uh, what I've heard was, what I've heard was, and I, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm sure it'll pop up because I know I've seen it somewhere. I just can't find it right now. Uh, was that um, uh, Slyker gave access to all of his, uh, financial stuff over to somebody that he trusts who's working with XQC or something to that effect in order to help try to get this money back. Now, I don't know what, what truth is to that because I can't find those tweets now. Uh, so I didn't have a chance to just look at it and then like, you know, I look into them to see if it's true. But, you know, they're trying to do their best to do right by the viewers or the people or the other streamers who uh, who maybe are less fortunate than uh, the XQC or Train or Ludwig and all that stuff where they're not making you know, it's two million, three million, four million, five million dollars a year. Or sorry, a month. <laughs> he handed it over to to Miskiff's team. All right, so he handed it over to Miskiff's team. Sure, um, but these guys still. Everybody, everybody's trying. Like I said, it, to me, it feels like everybody's trying the hardest to get their own, get their name into this mix because it's like it's drama. It's huge drama. So it's like huge engagement. So everyone wants to try to do all this shit. Um, so uh, we see. <laughs> we we already see uh, Rich Rich got his stuff back. I guess he was he had loaned out a few things to um, 
piss like her. He got those back. Um, uh, we have uh, comments here. We have a uh, train. Train also uh, chimed in as well. He says, uh, and he, you know, he brings up a good point that you guys are talking about too. So to be clear, the people scapegoating slots, uh, uh, blackjack and roulette, and not blaming the individual are the real problem. On top of that, Slacker was a sports betting addict. The one type of gambling that is normalized and that I don't hear a single one of you clout gobbling, goblin fucks talking about. With that said, the streamers and viewers who all who sell a false reality should be banned. People who gatekeep giveaways through codes that require you gamble, uh, require you to gamble should be banned. People who hide all losses and only show wins should be banned. Things like this are predatory. Now, um, uh, now train train is like the 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 point zero 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 one percent of uh, of gamblers on Twitch. He actually moved to Canada because he couldn't gamble like like you know here in the states or whatever. Uh, and somebody else, uh, another big uh, Adam Ross, actually moved to like Mexico or something like that again, so he could continue gambling online without any repercussions or tax or whatever. I can't remember what exactly, but essentially, like you know, these people are they're they're doing what they can in order to keep up with their gambling addiction, and they're trying to paint it as not being a gambling addiction. And if you don't believe me, if you don't know anything about train wreck. He's not one to talk when it comes to like gambling not being addicting. I just went and checked his recent VODs. This is a VOD from uh, eight days ago, uh, and it's a 24, 26 hour stream, and it is basically mm. nothing, nothing but gambling. It's 26 hour stream gambling. Uh, oh, error. Okay, sure. Insufficient bet. Gambling. 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 Gam it's 26 hours, guys. It's 26 hours. All right. <laughs> so <clears throat> so yeah he's not one to talk when it comes to like who's addicted to what or whatever because clearly this man's got an issue um how is that fun to watch i don't know i don't know he makes it a point to say that you know you're gonna lose you're gonna lose don't bet don't bet whatever but that doesn't necessarily excuse the fact that you'll know, like, stream for 26 hours just basically throwing money around uh, or whatever um <clears throat> and of course this is a stake sponsor stream which you can't do anymore that's pretty much the end of that because that's been changed we'll talk about that in a second shiny moving pixels uh they were sponsored by gambling site that didn't have a u.s license um are you talking to somebody else oh permit okay uh so uh i see so then we see a uh, uh ms kiff and uh, some of the other like, uh, pokey and everything, uh, they start talking about uh, put getting together and actually start uh, and actually protest against this. And I'll let you uh, just go and take a listen to it. Actually. I would totally if, if, if someone said Miz sign this right now and we're going to not stream for a whole week, I would say, can we do longer? I would I would totally be down. <laughs> I'll say, look, I'll take someone else's time, too. <laughs> I mean, OTK and pokey alone, you guys could probably move mountains. Oh. If, if you got if you got Asmin on board, Asmin would love a week off too, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, I really uh, like Charlie? your idea of doing it Q4 around Christmas too, because that'll hurt the most. Two week vacation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would because that's. Talk about doing around Christmas. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, I would yeah, do that in a heartbeat. Also, I would totally. If, if so, <clears throat> guess basically want to stream for at least a week. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you've been all those streams watching it live yeah what is this one code miko is this related i, I, I saw her talk about it earlier but i was just meanwhile tubers okay um so so yeah so they're planning on doing their uh doing uh, their own protests against all this stuff um and you know they're not they're not really part of this other than they want to stop twitch gambling uh they um actually had a couple tweets going out where they're like you know retweet to like stop twitch and it was actually trending for a minute twitch stop gambling was trending for a good while so <clears throat> success on their part now obviously during this whole period there's just tons and tons of people like flaming each other back and forth and all that stuff taking sides and all that um and we have this this ms kiff basically uh interjects himself into this uh conversation by uh that's happening under asmongold asmongold says um let's go and pull that up here real quick here <clears throat> so as goal said how in the fuck is Slyker not banned on Twitch guy literally uses a platform to defraud dozens of people streamers and viewers alike and admits it Gideon J G Dion, uh, is uh, sitting on a perma while Slyker gets to go live and laugh about actual crime it's an absolute disgrace Twitch uh, G Dion, I believe was the uh, he was a streamer who got banned for and I think we talked about it recently too actually he came up uh, uh, what when the uh, that one streamer was caught having sex on camera um by the way i watched the full video of that you're right <laughs> they did they did do the whole thing um 
And so Slyker, uh, uh, so so anyways, so he, so Gideon was uh, was banned for uh, raid raid harassment, basically, um, where he was raiding like Pokey and having people, yeah, hate raiding, basically. And so he was banned for that. Um, and so so Zach really doesn't have. This is really a terrible example for uh, for Asmongold personally. So <laughs> he deserved it. He deserved it. Right? He was he was sending people to be dicks to uh, to like the biggest streamer on Twitch. I mean, on top of being stupid. Uh, <laughs> You kind of deserved it. And so, uh, so, but anyways, you know, we got to keep in mind that I believe Psycho lives in like the UK or something like that. So how that, how that, all that shit applies, like in terms of like legality and all that stuff, I'm sure there's wire fraud and all that stuff, like laws and all that stuff that exists. But, you know, uh, it's, it's not something that we can necessarily say that you could be, you could be, um, charged with here in the States. Right. Um, and so it says here, uh, we could scroll down a little bit and we see, oh, is it gone now? Oh shit. No, it's not gone. Hmm. The criminal. Worst fucking thing about it. Yeah, I think it's under here. Oh, because the tweet was deleted. So, ooh, hold on. Let me pull up something else here. Uh, so one of the tweets that I that I that I had was deleted. I have the I have the backup here. It was deleted right away. So I did get this though. Uh, so. <clears throat> So in this, here's a miscup delete tweet. Uh, it says, so Trainwreck uh, was talking to, well, this is basically in the same thread. Um, uh, and he says, because your pals decided it was in the best interest to use the platform and the, very, and the very person that scammed everyone for his horse racing and tennis bets, to somehow twist it and wage their war against me. And we both know deep down why the insecure little man is doing this. So what I, I don't know what he means by that last line, but basically what he's saying is what I've already kind of framed was that the um uh was that the gambling that was taking place wasn't exact wasn't even close to the gambling that people have issues with on Twitch, but they made it their issue. Miss Kiff and uh and Pokey and all of them made it uh, uh helped basically egg that on and make that a thing. And so Miss Kiff says like Chinese says I, I if we're gonna be uh, going to deplatform people for scamming others, shouldn't we have banned you for Jolt Coin a few years back? Jolt Coin was a uh was was a coin, a crypto coin, a shit coin basically, um that was rug pulled by by train wreck, I believe. Uh I don't know if anybody was scammed out of money for all that or whatever, but typically when you talk about people we talk about uh, crypto and rug pulling, somebody lost money. Uh let me catch up on this real quick. Let me see. Uh see the gambling is illegal in China, so they are using UK football to bypass the regulations. Betting firms get licenses from the Isle of Wight and use UK football to advertise gambling websites they can use in China. They project adverts on screen and pitch so only certain markets can see them. Uh, also use kit sponsors. It's also worth a trillion dollars, apparently. Yeah, it's crazy. Everybody's throw a link. We can post it. Um, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. You know, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we, we have a lot to go through still, but thank you, though. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, he said, so, so he chimes in with this and, um, this is where we get, and I, I, fuck, I, I think I lost that tweet because it's not, um, linking here. Let me see if I can find it. Give me a second. Is it this tweet? Oh, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. I have, um, yeah, I had, I had the original, but that was deleted. So, <laughs> and so the response to the shit coin, uh, accusation was, uh, was this he says are you going to send Maya and Mitch to railroad and blackmail me like you did those girls to cover up all those sexual assaults you fucking scumbag piece of shit you want to come at me and make shit up and you better be sure you don't live in a glass house you insecure pussy so this was a big hit this was a big hit um, any kind of sexual sexual harassment or sexual assault or sexual whatever uh, uh, accusations on social media is typically met with a lot of attention <laughs> especially when it's a couple of the biggest streamers on the platform um, thank you again Digi for grabbing that most important tweet in the fucking story <laughs> fuck trainers but damn this is a, this is a great call out this okay so I have mixed feelings about this. So he does follow up and he says people involved know the truth, but da -da -da. basically he's saying that Ms. Kiff didn't assault the women. He didn't assault them, uh, it, but he helped cover them up. He helped basically cover them up in some way. Um, so, so we have now Maya and this is not so stupid. I feel like this is such drama, but God damn it. It's fucking huge. <laughs> I completely decided to do this text with replacing state. Okay, so um, so uh, uh, Maya talks about her take on the situation, and we're gonna go back and take a look at some of the stuff. But basically, what she says is that she did go down there to talk to her. Um, they did. Um, uh, they she did talk to the person in question that was sexually assaulted, uh, and this was a year ago or something. Um, and they agreed that 
that sexual assault should not be part of this twit longer that she's going to put out for, for whatever reason it was a they decision and not necessarily her decision uh but keep in mind that maya and Miz were uh friends with the person who was uh being accused of um uh, uh of of doing these of, of you know doing these things um god damn look at that scroll i know look at that fucking scroll it's insane it's all it's like it's, i see nothing but like but but like uh um let me see. Uh, is she 15? Blah, blah, blah. I'm 15. Uh, e Rob. Oh, E Rob. God damn. It's a mess. It's a mess. Maya Clinton. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so everybody's, everybody's looking at Maya now as if, like, oh, did you help, like, coerce this person into, into reframing her, uh, her twit longer so that way her friend, Maya's friend, doesn't look quite as bad. Um, so. <laughs> The original twit longer from Adriana Lee, uh, who is the person that was uh, that was groped by Crazy Slick, which is where all this stuff came from. You see how this tangent, like we're talking about gambling and the boo, because this is what it's been like for the past few days. Uh, she goes on, talks about Crazy Slick. This is last year, 6th of July, 2021. Uh, and she says here, she says, then apparently I was passed out in one of the rooms of the party. He came into the room while I was unconscious. He came into the room a couple times after being asked to leave me alone each time. In two of the instances, he touched my neck and chest, saying he was just making sure I was still alive after being a assured by my, by my friends that I was okay as they were watching over me over me whether or not his intentions were out of genuine concern or not I don't know to be clear he did not rape me or assault me but his actions did make me feel uncomfortable uh it reads like it reads like assault it reads I mean if you did literally grab your titties it kind of feels like assault so now it looks like it looks like Maya who was sent who was sent by Ms. Kiff or whatever uh, <laughs> uh helped change that so that way their friends or their friend uh, uh could continue to you know basically stream and all that stuff Woo! repeat unwanted yeah i saw exactly exactly um see all i can say is how i feel about about with this story yeah uh actually you do yes it seems like once uh once one big story breaks some people get involved all finally decide to pull into the bag yeah that's what's happening people are pulling up dirt now because they're getting into this pissing contest and so this came up so this comes up now so it feels like so it, on one hand it feels like uh opportunity it feels like they saw they had a trump card they're just holding on to and they waited they not necessarily waited but they saw a great opportunity to kind of throw this out there in order to like immediately shut down uh um i mean i didn't say they held it but they knew about it like obviously train wrecks knew about this uh about this alleged cover-up but he never said anything but now he sees his opportunity uh or he sees the opportunity and he takes it and he what happens he immediately shut down Miz. Miz shut the fuck up like immediately deleted that tweet um and fuck <laughs> i explained this to jen last night for my birthday i was like jen let's go let's go chat in the tub a little hot tub a little bit right it's gonna smoke we'll smoke a little bit kind of relax my wife and all that stuff and i was explaining her the story and she was like floored she was like are there gangs on twitch i was like yeah i was explaining it's like yeah there's otk on one side and there's all this other she's like are there gangs on twitch it's like kind of there is yeah kind of except in real life a gang will just beat you up and like here it's like they'll actually take all of your money and shit and your livelihood so <laughs> twitch silver war yeah uh so so then of course more dirt starts getting dug up here we have a response to that situation that happened on a uh on a separate on a side stream that miss kiff was doing where he says the following well, they don't very quietly <laughs> motherfuckers don't know how to redline their shit when they don't People probably don't even know the situation. The fuck? No, it's not. Yeah. It's not ninety percent of people. Look, I, I don't think there's a single person that we used to hang out with that doesn't hang out with Slick anymore because of what happened. I actually think there's literally none. Because the reality is, worst comes to worst of it, it's fucking like sexual harassment, right? I mean, like who get like. No one, it, 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 of what you can deem of it, it's sexual se harassment, whatever, at a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. John, I'm going to turn this off if you're going to be... So, um, he says that uh, this was taken out of context where he was being badgered by chat. Off. 
and you can see her at the end he says he says chad if you're gonna be like this i want to go hang up or whatever um but he does he does say that it's not that big of a deal it's like low low it's like a low level it's like first it's like first degree sexual assault or something like that you know <laughs> sexual harassment so he does play it down a little bit which is of course a bad look i don't know why anybody would say something so stupid on fucking any any kind of platform why would you even think about it just fucking hell um and so, so yeah, this this obviously was just more dirt that was piled up, and these guys are just finding dirt and sli slinging it back and forth. Meanwhile, there is like a mini Me Too that's happening with with the uh, um uh, 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 uh fuck his name's in my mind, of course, Zoop. crazy slick. They're sorry, the slicker than slick. So yeah, it's crazy slick. It says uh, as a crazy slick sent me a dick pic on Snapchat when I made it clear I did not want to see it, and he messaged me rude when I ignored it. I only spoke to me uh, only spoke to me when he was horny, didn't give a fuck about me uh, when he wasn't, and then came to my Twitter DMs wondering why I wasn't replying. Uh, and then yeah, then he went from calling me kiddo to telling me he's jacking off four times a day. I still have ten snaps from him right now that I haven't opened because I'm scared one of them will have his dick or weird shit. Uh, oh wait, hold on a second. Anyways, open the snaps. Luckily, none of them was actual dick. One very close to being it, but here's proof of them snapping it because you could see his room. Okay, we won't worry about that. Just in case there's like a hidden dick in there or something like that, you know, like hidden pictures and shit. Um, because he's either an idiot, scumbag, or both. Yeah, everyone knows Miskiff is basically Joey from Hackers. Con. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so Slick, so S Crazy Slick ends up making uh, a statement. Uh, he says this. He says, I have never sexually assaulted anyone. Okay, there's this better. Uh, uh, and never will. I have never had any intentions of ever harming anyone. I go out of my way to check on somebody and I get accused of rape. This is unfair. I will be getting a lawyer ASAP. Learn from the Johnny Depp situation and think first. Okay, so um, anytime somebody decides to pull the Johnny Depp card, I automatically am sus. Like, it's just, it just, it's just like, just because it happened to Johnny Depp doesn't mean it's happening to you. <laughs> like, especially when there's like tons of people coming out tons of witnesses all this stuff all this stuff's coming out yeah it's a red flag total red flag anyway so he deleted his account he deleted his account is he implying it was, it was both ways no no I, I think he was implying that that he that he's being accused of something he didn't do right yeah um not like Johnny Depp wasn't guilty either. Oh yeah, okay. I guess he could be implying that too. No, I think he's looking at it purely as like from like from a black and white perspective. Like I'm accused of something and I'm gonna be and, I, and I'm gonna be freed from this because yeah, it's not it's not true. Uh, he's not looking at the actual the minutia of it, which is both of them are pieces of shit. And, and and she she was the, obviously an aggressor. Whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna talk about fucking Johnny Depp. Anyways, so um. About the Johnny Depp case. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You, are you surprised? <laughs> so he ends up deleting his account, and then he disappeared, which caused a scare that I didn't even notice, but apparently some people did. Uh, but he was found. He went missing. And he texts goodbye to some friends, and then they found him. Um, there's a video floating around, too, of Train. Uh, this is probably around the beginning of the pandemic or something like that, where, where Train Rex, there's a group of them, and he was like, he said um, that, uh, that Crazy Slick was was like a serial killer or something like that and it's funny like i was i was oh, it's funny but it was i was like wow man like that's uh like that's a, that, that was like a couple years ago that he said that and it's like all right you definitely you definitely saw something in this young man <laughs> uh you heard that he was suicidal that's what he says and and you know you don't know when somebody is until they do it which which uh, the problem with suicide right a lot of times um so it's good it's good that everybody went and checked up on him and he's fine he's safe and all that um uh, but this is a lot of pressure on somebody right I mean, this guy fucked up. He definitely doesn't belong. He doesn't deserve to be like a streamer or anything like that. He doesn't belong in this industry for sure. Um, and so, yeah, he definitely fucked up. If anything, he should just fucking leave. But uh, Miss Kiff has been struggling with what to do with his friends, you know, with Crazy Slick. Uh, and it feels like every time something comes up, Miss Kiff's ready to just be like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with him. And it's like, damn, man, like what kind of friend is that? You know, it's like either you're his friend or you're not his friend. Are you going to fucking defend him? because you believe that he didn't do anything wrong or do you know that he did stuff wrong and you're trying to let it slide and now you're just trying to determine whether or not he's worth the extra extra you know baggage that he carries with them uh and so yeah uh miss kiff's probably not a very good friend <laughs> maybe 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 um 
So yeah, he disappeared. He was later found. More dirt focus. Or dirt starts to surface. This is a clip that came up. This is a clip from a while ago uh, that was making the rounds after this. It does strike me as weird that Twitch staff are in Trainwreck's chat accepting $50,000 in crypto from him. Must be hard to see clearly when deciding whether to regulate the person that just paid near your entire salary in one Bitcoin transaction. And all it is is just basically a video. You can't really see anything, but he does He does talk mm -hmm. on the... Uh, I think we're good. Let's get back. He, he does talk on the... He's on talk on Discord or something like that with, uh, with a couple of um, uh, Twitch employees. One has actually passed away as of June, I believe, passed away. The other one is currently suspended, but not necessarily related to uh, to this. But but this is you know on stream, he's basically you know giving money uh, to these uh, to these you know, employees and Pe Pegafish. Uh, Pegafish, he's the one that passed away recently. Um, and by the way, they won. They won. This is out of context. They won a a giveaway. They were hanging out as chat. I guess they won a giveaway or something. Um, so. So yeah, this is the other one, uh, Relum here, Miller backwards. Uh, he also uh, won some, but uh, but yeah, I guess they were hanging out as chat and they won. Two Twitch employees ended up winning a fair and square uh, a sweepstakes giveaway of some Bitcoin. It's really good luck, I guess. Um, that's why he, that's why he gambles all the time, man. He knows how to pick them. Uh, I mean, Twitch admin were sitting on the illegal boxing matches uh, streams as well back in the. Oh yeah, anytime anytime there's one, there's always some. There's okay, so anytime there's like some illegal streams or something, you almost always find Twitch staff in there, and I have to assume that they're in there trying to report it and they're waiting to see if something happens. If I was a Twitch employee and like there was a boxing match and it was illegal, right, to stream, and I, I, would, I would go in and watch the fireworks. I would go in, I want to see that shit shut down. I would report it and I would hang out and watch. So I have to assume that a lot of people are doing that. And in this case too, right, it does look like, it does look like, it looks bad out of context if they're paying money to this person. And actually it's, I mean, so first off, when I saw this, I was like, this has to be against, this has to be against some kind of guidelines, bylaws, rules, toss, employee agreement, something. Has to, has to, has to be. Because I, I used to work for a service too. That we had people that made fucking way more money than I was making working on the damn service. And if I took money from any of them for any reason, whether it's a giveaway or whatever, like that's a problem. And so, you know, we know we did, we did see us at we we DJ Wheat, uh, former former Twitch employee, um, he said, uh, oops, oh, this is the copy of the thing here, but he says, speaking as former Twitch staff, not only is this absolutely disgusting, but it is 100% in violation of Amazon business conduct and ethics policy. Not Train's fault, it's not his job to police ethics of Twitch, but absolutely the employees for asking slash accepting payment. And then someone went and found the actual thing here. Conflict of interest may occur when an employee or family member receives personal benefit as a result of the employee's position within Amazon.com. And then it says a conflict of interest may also arise in an employee's business or personal relationship with a customer, supplier, competitor, business partner, etc. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's black and white, you can't do it. You can't do it. Um, so again, this is just more dirt that's just like keeps on. This isn't even recent. I was like, I saw this. I saw this when we retweeted it yesterday. And I was like, whoa, is this happening right now? And then I started digging and I found out, okay, yeah, no, it didn't happen recently, but uh, but it did still happen. Uh, and and one of them, like I said, one of them passed away, you know, uh, but the other one um, is suspended. And from what I've read, not necessarily related to this. Um, let's go to Twitch staff who stream and accept donations. Uh, that's a great question. I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works because you're not receiving it. Well, you're not receiving it from the partners, but if it's a partner doing it, huh? I don't know. Oh, it's a good question. I mean, it does clearly stay here that you can't do it. So maybe there's some kind of weird gray area, but what we saw in that video was certainly not gray area. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell Amazon anything you do outside of work if it aligns with your job duties. They will monitor what you do, and that's exactly what it's true. It's true. He knows. Trust me, he knows. Um, whoo, man. And then, and then, fucking out of nowhere, Ice fucking Poseidon comes in and drops in. He says, I brought you into this world. Now I'm taking you out. Be warned, there's some, some verbiage in here that's used that's not allowed. But you can see it anyways. Uh, and these are DMs that he had. Old DMs. 2001 well, old. But still. DMs from 2018 where, uh, where Ms. Kiff was talking to um, uh, talking to Ice Poseidon. Um, and, you know, he's using, I mean, he's using terminology that we're just not supposed to fucking use. You know what I'm saying? It's some pretty fucking, yeah, 2018 wasn't that long ago. Not even that long ago. Um, and so, <laughs> so Ice drops this. Uh, now, just, just for a little bit of like history here, Ms. Kiff used to be, uh, a camera, I believe a cameraman for, um, uh, uh, for Ice Poseidon. And he, he started getting big and all that stuff, doing his own stuff. A lot of people that, 
that would like you know basically hang out with thin ice poseidon's like orbit we're just basically trying like cloud chasers they're just trying to get uh get some of that money ice poseidon for a good period of time was one of the biggest streamers like period um and so and you even see here um let me see yeah i don't need you it's over just give me the money and let me go yeah see <laughs> he said we were friends paul but i'm killing it on twitch so of course after calling him some some some, some terms there uh so yeah it, it's 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 clear that you know as recent as 2018 again not that long ago um that uh Ms. Kiff was exhibiting some uh, behavior that was unbecoming of somebody who would be running uh a uh, uh, a, a company that champions diversity and and streaming and all that stuff. This doesn't really doesn't really fit. Um, Runescape players, yeah, gamer words. God, there's so many like the whole gamer word word list is in here for fuck's sake. So so this basically culminated in uh, in Miskiff getting um uh, getting removed from the uh, well temporarily eight weeks here this is, <coughs> excuse me this is a statement from otk which is a company that he founded this is what, when otk was formed nearly two years ago we strive to create a gaming organization that embodies our values as creators gamers and individuals yesterday evening a series of clips and content uh, surfaced relating to one of our founders and due to the series of what's been brought forward we've begun the process of contacting contracting a third-party legal organization to investigate the issue in detail in the meantime Ms. gives in place on leave and we'll be stepping away from his organizational duties pending the results of the investigation so so he he is he's he's basically uh not gonna be in charge of anything um for for a while uh and until they you know they do this investigation and all that stuff um seems like the league state we're getting there too bud <laughs> worms boy i know it's been it's been one of those it's been one of those kind of weeks man i i, I almost i almost mistaken these two because i was like he's gonna be gone for eight weeks i don't know that was the other that was the other founder that that's gonna get what we're gonna talk about a little bit that got eight weeks jesus christ um do got his vacation yeah yeah <laughs> yeah he got his vacation so so then then uh and this is actually a little bit out of order here but uh, uh we get a statement from twitch uh and they say that uh updated gambling gambling content on twitch has been a big topic of discussion in the community and something we've been actively reviewing Da, 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 da. Today we want to update our plans. While we prohibit sharing links and referral codes to all sites, including slots, roulette, and dice games, we've seen some people circumvent those rules and expose our community to potential harm. And we talked about that too, right? They would use other links or something to get them to another site and then get them this whatever. It's, yeah, this is just they find ways to basically get around this policy. So we're making a, a policy change uh, October 18th to prohibit streaming of gambling sites that include slots, roulette, or dice games that aren't licensed in either the U.S. or other jurisdictions that provide sufficient consumer protection. These sites will include stake.com roll bit dual bits rubet uh however we may identify others as we move forward of course um and so uh 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 <laughs> miss gift kick has something to do with gambling uh, it's very complicated man if you missed it then you missed it but you know you can watch the vlog <laughs> this will surely stop gambling so they, they say they're going to share some specifics and everything but it does say that they they want to ban sites that focus on sports betting i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry joku uh sports betting fantasy sports and poker uh none of this related at all to what Sliker did but all of this has been lumped into one giant fucking ball uh now personally i'm happy to see that uh that gambling is uh at least being pared down to some degree uh it's argued that sports betting and other and horse betting all that stuff is actually more of a skill than luck and that's what differentiates itself from your typical slots and uh and th those types of like you know stake and roll bit those types of uh uh, of gambling because those are purely luck based there's like there's no skill there right <laughs> uh so so and also seeing them kind of clean up on like where they're gonna allow some of these licenses and all that stuff to uh um to uh to basically to to be able to stream or to actually be able to uh stream on their sites um reminds me actually so uh actually i actually have this right here as a reminder so let me pull this up so this is this is prop 27 prop 27 is a california uh, prop that we're going to be voting on here in a little bit that is going to determine whether or not um, uh, the state of California is going to allow online gambling to be like hosted or whatever here in California outside of uh, of Native Americans and indigenous folks who already have gambling, you know, on their uh, on their land and all that. Um, whoops. So 
So I actually was thinking that it would po be possible because I just got this recently, right? Uh, so I thought it was it was it was possible that we wouldn't see an update on gambling on Twitch until after this after this is voted on, which is going to be in November. So they're going to make a change here, but it's possible that depending on the outcome of this, they might change your stance again at a later date because depending on which way this goes could determine whether or not um, uh, basically any site that has a license or a deal or a deal or a partnership with like a tribe uh, can can build and maintain a an online gambling uh, entity or site uh, here in California. Uh, so yeah, I'm surprised to see that they jumped on this so soon, but with everything imploding and all that stuff, uh, it felt like maybe it was a good time to do it. But also feels like it was kind of timely because there was some other bullshit that was coming down as well, and they needed a win. Uh, gonna be easy to bring back to Stevie Little's crap. Live there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitch and never banned sports betting because Amazon's partnered with NFL. So I do have a. Let me see. Uh, yeah, here we go. So that's true. This is uh, this is also fairly recent. S Fan last year actually helped secure some of this stuff as well. Um, so it says in April, the NFL and Amazon announced a multi-year agreement to extend their partnership in delivering digital streams on Thursday Night Football on Twitch NFL, including interactive sites like blah, 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 all that stuff. So yeah, it's true. Like Twitch, Twitch, Twitch is not going to ban sports or sports betting because it's something that uh, that they have they have uh, um, they have money in. Uh, but, you know, they also see, like, all the money being made on, on their stake.com and all that stuff. And they're probably like, well, fuck those guys. You know, they are they have their own deals that they've licensed and that they've uh, uh, they've set up, they've contracted. And so they want to make sure that these things flourish, but not obviously these other ones. And I agree. Like, you know, like I, I grew up in Vegas. So for me, it's like I don't have, I don't have very much like uh, I don't have very much compassion for for people who are like, oh, we need to buy gambling is fine. It's like, no, it's not fucking fine. It's fucking not fine. Like gambling is absolutely addictive and it's very hard for people to like avoid it it's fucking tr it's like you can't like why do you think gambling is such a huge industry it's a fucking huge industry that like, I, I can say on twitter there is an entire state that pays zero nobody in the state of nevada pays state taxes right no person okay pays state taxes because the casinos basically pay for everything because that's how much money gambling makes so of course it's like yeah of course these places are making tons of money twitch is not part of any of that they can't because they can't condone it or anything because state of california uh uh, uh it's illegal to do so here um uh, and probably elsewhere in, in other obviously a bunch of other states as well um but my loot boxes <laughs> how long before we can bet on nfl with bits i don't think they're gonna do that for a long while because this is this thing has reached ahead and they want to let this cool off for a little bit um so yeah they did say they're going to be banning um uh you know basically a handful of forms of gambling none related to what sliker was doing because that was not taking place on twitch which makes sense um this does this does though knock out some of the biggest streamers train Rex is gonna have to find something else to do um uh he, he, i think he made a joke about uh switching to horse betting or something like that uh and then uh, uh adam ross another big streamer he's primarily you know gambling on stream uh he's not gonna be able to do it so all those stake.com all that shit should be basically gone I don't like gambling, so when I went to Vegas, I was bored as fuck. It's either gamble or pay a lot for drinks and a company for the night. Yeah. Yeah, I, I you know, when I, uh, I didn't start gambling in Vegas, so I went back with Jen. I, the whole time I lived in Vegas, I never gambled one time. I was just like, I'm not gonna do that shit. I'm not stupid. You know? And then I see this shit taking off and flourishing on Twitch, and I'm like, dude, you guys need to really fucking do something about this. <laughs> like, this shit gets carried away pretty fast. And then when a lot of money gets involved, when a lot of money gets involved, and people are going to fucking curse out to get licenses for their websites and shit to, like, to host uh, uh, gambling uh, gambling you know, software or whatever, like, it's 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 just, uh, yeah, it gets carried away, man. It's a lot of fucking money. People are going to do whatever they can in order to get that money. Um and ended with Twitch banning slots. Exactly. Yeah. Started with with Slikers, Slikers sports betting on tennis, and then ended with yeah, yeah, exactly. So there was. We do have a final update here with uh, Real Miskif. Uh, Real Miz, uh, Miz did come out and he did say, um, uh, "Oh, <laughs> I, got, I had the wrong link. The link that I had was the the Twitch to ban gambling. My bad." <laughs> so he does have a Twitch longer. Uh, where or Twitch longer, tweet longer, Twitch longer would kind of work. Uh, where he does, uh, he does uh, go through and he's, he apologized for a bunch of things and he says that he's going to be take some time off. I mean, it's a pretty good apology letter written by who knows who, uh, probably him. <laughs> so real OGs think it started with oh with shit camp XQC edition. Yeah, I didn't want to go back too far on this, but it yeah it 
uh, you know, it's kind of like the Harambe thing. You know, like everything in the world started going to shit when Harambe happened. Um, and people are trying to put it. It's like, oh, when it was E-Rob was banned for saying he was going to beat up somebody at TwitchCon. But meanwhile, somebody's like literally fucking on stream and they get seven days, right? Uh, and then uh, and then XQC uh, ends up not going to shit camp, which was an event that was being hosted by OTK or whatever. Uh, and it was a bunch of streamers, a streamer event, basically. Uh, he ends up not going at the very last second. And that pissed off a lot of people. Uh, and then he ends up breaking up with those girls girlfriend or something oh, i don't fucking know but hey, there's there's all this drama and shit and then it was immediately eclipsed by uh by slikers drama and then all that was immediately eclipsed by everything else and then fuck and fuck and fuck 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 it just kept on fuck going meanwhile i checked to see what emma Shear's is doing you guys know emma Shear, right you know the president of uh, uh ceo president whatever of uh of twitch and he says he says so is yesterday during the height of all this shit. So you so weird to me that Twitter doesn't save your drafts and there's no drafts at all on the website that I could find. Does anyone know why? <laughs> ah, man. So yeah, I, I've I've said this before and I want to say it again. Emmett is not in charge of the company. He's gone. Launched all that. All that. Where is it? I hear this. One. When we're applying the community guidelines, right? Yeah, like that. That was like the last we've seen of him. He's not part of this. He's basically doing his own thing as evidenced by not participating in anything even remotely related to the company that he supposedly heads. Jesus. I want to live in the world of zero fucks that Emmett lives in. <laughs> Gambling is one of the hardest addictions to quit too, as uh, is socially accepted and visible and invisible. You don't come home smelling of gambling. Your friends won't even notice. They just wonder where the jewelry went, rent, ah, went. Yes, and that's that's the biggest one of the biggest issues with uh with everybody um, who was friends with Sliker, who he got money from, that they, you know, they, they're like, <laughs> they feel fucking wrong, <laughs> wronged. Sorry, not wrong, but wronged uh, by him, because uh, you just don't know. You don't see it coming. You don't see it coming. So that wasn't the, that wasn't the end of the drama for uh, for Twitch though. Fuck. <laughs> so uh, Twitch Twitch ends up. Uh, um, there's this article that drops this morning. This is on. Uh, I find open this in another window here, just in case. Because I think it's gonna, I've reached my limit on Bloomberg. But there was a multi-year, um, in-depth investigation on Twitch by Bloomberg, and they found that um, uh, there's great article here. So you create an account, you get one bonus article. Uh, basically, they use these sketches to kind of demonstrate that someone's streaming, and it says, "Cool, but can you place the cam on a table? We could just see legs." And then it kind of describes the scene. And basically, there's painting a picture of of uh, uh, predators, like, you know, social media predators, you know, uh, internet predators, whatever, uh, who are doing what they can. I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see some more, more text here. Uh, basically, just trying to get, you know, whatever out of underage streamers. Uh, it says, you can do a split or a handstand. Wow, good. You could do more. Can you do more TikTok dances, right? Um, and so there's this huge, this is a huge article that goes over like all the different, yeah, child predators use Twitch to systematic track kids live streaming. They tracked, I uh, have the number here somewhere, 1,000, is like 1,000, basically like 2,000 accounts. Um, and it said that uh, over the, uh, amongst the 2,000 accounts, uh, 279,000 kids were targeted. They said each account had like upwards of 1,000 different follows and pretty much majority were, were, were kids. Um, and by kids, you know, I don't, I don't mean like any uh, under 13. Most of those are pretty much like taken down immediately, but uh, can you do a split, bitch? You can't. No, I can't. <laughs> Why don't I just pull out my balls? They just get it over with, all right? Uh, so um, the article also focuses on, says it's so easy to stream on Twitch. And it's true, it's easy. On YouTube, you have to have, like there's, you have to have um, a certain amount of like uh, viewers or, or not viewers, uh, a certain amount of subs or something. There's there's a gate, there's some kind of gatekeeping thing set up on YouTube. On TikTok, it's like a thousand viewers in order to be considered uh, to be able to be a live streamer. Um, that's not to mean that you know it's not easy for kids just to start live streaming on Twitch or on TikTok. You know, I mean, people are getting you know followers and shit by posting whatever, and so they'll eventually reach that number. Um, uh, Sickles articles talking about child predators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so who, who's who's thought letting kids broadcast themselves on the internet would possibly go wrong? Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, 
And so, yeah, basically they saw, they saw that there was just like, there was a connection between so many of these. It shows here, child streamer, predatory accounts, and it shows like these, yeah, how they're all kind of gravitate towards. I thought this is pretty interesting. Um, it's just kind of, you know, visual data here. During the times, 1,976 users systematically found and followed young people recording themselves live on the site. Uh, again, to go back real quick, uh, it's so it's super easy to stream on Twitch because you make an account and then you can just stream using the uh, iOS or the Android app. There's no there's no limitations or anything. You could just go live, and that's you know I mean if you look at uh, if you look at Twitch versus other platforms, Twitch pretty much only has streaming. Like all the other stuff is like trash. They don't have they don't have any like evergreen content and all that stuff that's really accessible or or, or visible uh, or discoverable by any means. It's pretty much all live stuff. So yeah, their primary things to get people streaming as fast as they can, and then they're just gonna try to you know handle it you know whenever problems come up. And so Bloomberg's basically going in there and saying, hey, just because the way your platform works doesn't mean you should be doing it, as evidenced by all of these creepers that we found we found here. Um, so they, Twitch does, does make a statement, though. They said prevent, uh, preventing child harm is one of our most fundamental pr uh, responsibilities as a society. We do not allow children under 13 to use Twitch. And preventing our services from being used uh, for harm is one of our biggest priorities. Um, so, yeah, he says uh, uh, yeah, it's just uh, they're 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 saying that they're not doing enough. They're acknowledging they're not doing enough because it still exists. Uh, and I think the core problem is pretty obvious is that it's too easy to stream on Twitch. It's too easy to stream on Twitch. Uh, and you don't really know. Uh, you don't really know there's a problem until you react to it when you're dealing with live content. It's all reactionary. There's no way to really, you know, unless the person literally, you know, puts in uh, that they're under 13, which by the way, don't type that out because your account will literally get banned. Um, but yeah, unless unless they actually disclose that they're under a certain age, you know, they're not going to get, uh, uh, they're not going to get discovered immediately. And then the ones that are between the ages of like 13 and 17, who are still kids, right? They're still underage. Uh, they're uh, they they don't um, they kind of just are able to just exist on, uh, on on Twitch, you know. And if their parents aren't watching them, then they just have unfettered access to Twitch, and therefore predators have unfettered access to uh, to kids. So yeah, this is a problem that's inherent to the platform. Now, this is uh, thank you, J.K. Kennedy, uh, for uh, I keep calling you. I'm sorry, Freycore. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Freycore, for dropping this. This is an article from uh, Wired. This is actually on uh, on Twitch. Oh, not this one. Sorry, there's another article. Uh, but this isn't the first time. Sorry, this isn't the first time that Twitch has been nailed for this. This is uh, July 30th, 2020. This was at the beginning of the pandemic uh, when everybody was streaming, everybody was doing whatever, trying to find some way, and a lot, a lot of kids were basically left with their own devices because parents were working. <laughs> so they couldn't watch their kids. They couldn't take their kids to school. They couldn't take their kids to daycare because, yeah, because the pandemic was happening. Um and uh, here we go. Forbes article. This is a Forbes article on TikTok. Basically the same thing um, that was happening there. Uh, we also have, I got I to gotta grab the Pay Money Webby uh, episode two. Pay Money Webby, he basically discussed the same thing. This was his... Uh, <laughs> he did an entire video covering uh, what kids really do on TikTok, uh, according to him. And, and basically just talks about how it's like underage, just kids who are underage, or, you know, under, under 18, um, who are... Uh, who are doing things that are inherently sexual but yeah it's uh yeah so it's this is a problem that exists on on pretty much all platforms uh but man what a day for this to drop for twitch though <laughs> and again twitch is probably the worst offender because uh because they're purely a reactionary uh entity they by design by it's live it's live. You can't preemptively go and jump that through that. Uh, scary thought. I haven't done that before. Does TikTok's super effective algorithm help child predators discover kids? I, I mean, I'm sure that it's probably pretty easy to go through and find, you know, kids streaming on, on TikTok or any other platform. You know, just uh, search for, I don't know, TikTok dances or something like that. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Why. I, don't, <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't know, right? Not just platforms of the internet as a whole. Okay. Yeah. But, but. We have to hold. We can't just say, "Well, it's this is the internet because the internet does ex the internet exists in partitions." You know, they're owned by different uh, entities, so each entity needs to meet a certain level of uh, of security or of protection or whatever. Uh, that's why COPPA exists. That's why COPPA exists it's with under thirteen thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's every every site's duty if they want to exist on the internet to regulate their uh, their sites to some degree. Um, and you know, like if they don't, then they're going to get nasty articles made until they're, mu they're muscled into doing it. <laughs> it's 
say, teach us, Mike. Oh, God. Spider-Man, Elsa, kiss. Oh, Jesus. That was another pay money Wubby video. <laughs> uh, interesting, but also scary, having AI image recognition to flag people who look underage streaming. I mean, that's that's a tough one, too, right? I mean, not just the implications of, like, having, you know, face recognition software and all that stuff, but, uh, but more uh, with the... Um, the mist, I mean, the misfires, I feel like, you know, I mean, can they even, I guess proportionally they could probably, I don't fucking know. I don't know, man. Someone's going to, they could make a hot dog, not a hot dog. I'm sure they could be like, is this a kid under eight? Would somebody maybe flag, flag a mod to come in or an admin to come in and take a look just to verify? I don't fucking know. Um, Twitch can't even get AI to track music. Jesus. There are older people who look younger and just shorter people in general that would discriminate against them. Could. Yeah. Yeah. It could cause problems, but Yeah. I don't know what Twitch is going to do. It's a problem. And Bloomberg's definitely hit them pretty hard at, at a time when they're already down. So, so I, so then, so before that article dropped though, I guess I'll be keeping the beer. <laughs> before the article dropped, we had a, we, uh, uh, Twitch makes an announcement, another announcement. Um, and this one is a letter from the president, Dan Clancy. Um, See, the real question is, will they actually impact their bottom line or will they continue to skirt the couple line? Because we'll find out. Uh, Declan gets Mike banned for appearing on stream. That's why. That, that's one reason why I don't let Declan come on stream for like that long. I don't have like a uh, like entire streams with Declan is because he's underage. And I try to explain it to him too and I feel bad, you know, because he wants so badly to like do stuff and connect with like, you know, he understands what I do and he wants to do it too. So when he turns 13, he's probably going to start streaming. But of course, I'm going to fucking be there. <laughs> Oh, not mini Wheat. He was on stream all the time. Yeah, well, you know, he also was DJ Wheat's kid. So, you know, maybe there's like certain rules and stuff like that that apply to certain people, but I'm not going to be one of those. <laughs> also, that was a different time, man. That was back when, uh, that was back when uh, Twitch was just the Wild West. It was just, what, two years ago or something? <laughs> he was on stream all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so, so Twitch comes out this morning. And said, hey, we should talk a little bit about this rev split setup that we have. Because it's not really working for us. Oh, man. So, there is, uh, there's kind of like an unwritten um, contract that you could, uh, it, or, uh, just like unlisted contract or deal that you can make with Twitch if you get above a certain viewership or whatever. And I've heard it's like, yeah, it's like 500 viewers on, you know, uh, uh, CCV. Um uh, concurrent viewers, uh, or whatever, a number of followers or whatever. There's all these, there's all these like rules and everything that kept changing every time we request. I actually submitted to, uh, get a rev increase and I was denied. Um, and it was probably like a year ago or so. And I see now why, because they were planning on getting rid of the 70, 30. I didn't want 70, 30, man. I just want it better than 50, 50. Anyway. So they say they're going to, uh, they're basically going to get rid of the 70, 30. Uh, so this is them essentially announcing, yes, the 7030 officially exists, but we're also going to kill it. So those of you guys who are kind of looking forward to getting some, uh, some extra, you know, some extra money or whatever, working towards that goal. Guess what? It's gone. Um, and they says here, it says for these streamers still on these premium deals, we're adjusting the deal. So they retain their 7030 revenue split for the first hundred thousand dollars earned through subscription revenue. Revenue above 100,000 will be split at the standard 50 50 share split. And we're announcing this change now, but it won't go into effect until after June 1st, 2023. So, and then next week, yeah, yeah. So, this is, um, so yeah, the 70 30 up until 100K, and then after that, it's going to be a 50 50 split. Uh, what they want, yeah, no more gamma. And suddenly, Twitch needs more revenue. <laughs> Exactly. Just run eight minutes of ads every five minutes. So they do. They, uh, yeah, they they did say that they are champion. They want to champion their fifty five percent revenue split. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, here it goes. So our recent bump in ads revenue share to eight to fifty five percent as part of the ads incentive program is a great way for these large streamers to make up most, if not all, of that revenue. For those that are interested in additional detail, we have provided a copy of the email. Blah 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 blah. Um, so yeah, they're saying that hey, you know, we got we got we got we got better better ad deals, the ad thing, yeah. So they're going to they're they're basically saying that if you can't if you want to maintain your current, your know, lifestyle, 
based off of your your current income from Twitch, uh, then you're gonna have to run more ads, and that's pretty much the gist. Uh, so yeah, you might see a lot of big streamers who you know want to maintain that you know million dollars of income or whatever. Uh, you want you might see them um, uh, 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 start running more ads and whatnot. Uh, Era actually did some math here, uh, and if it's wrong, then it's Era's fault. Uh, so Ira says, uh, over a 12 month period, if you have 1,666 or less monthly subs on the 7030, you are not affected by this. Uh, your take is still $69,972 of the $99,000, basically uh, $100,000. Uh, a streamer with a steady 5K each month loses 40K down from 210K to 170K annual. Twitch takes 130K. So. So yeah, I mean this this sound this sounds about right. We know that there's definitely like a threshold where once you get over a certain amount, they're going to be impacted negatively by this. Uh, whereas the majority of streamers, like all of us, right, all of us down here, we're not impacted by this at all. Our impact is going to be when some of these bigger streamers end up leaving to go to YouTube and they start taking a lot of those people and the viewers with them. So we don't get any of those trickle down viewerships or anything like that. There's not people just floating around looking for something to watch on Twitch. They're going to be on YouTube instead or whatever other pla streaming platform. Uh, hey, 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 don't be taking my streamers. Don't be taking my streamers. <laughs> don't, be taking, don't be taking my viewers, Josh. <laughs> uh, so... You just missed our thing on TikTok, dude. <laughs> it was brief. It was a big deal. Uh, I already follow you on YouTube. Yeah, yo, I mean, I'm not, I'm not planning on going anywhere, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, our, our impact is definitely going to be when we start to see a uh, overall decline in viewership and excitement and all that shit related to Twitch, and then, and then what happens when everybody moves over to YouTube, and then all of a sudden, all the cool kids are using YouTube or whatever other platform they're using TikTok, uh, and then all of us are stuck on Twitch, end up looking like all the fucking old heads. It's like, oh, look at this guy still so streaming on Twitch, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, why not I look like the asshole streaming on Twitch? So that's where that's where I could see this eventually have a negative impact on me in the future. By the way, sorry the alerts are turned off. But I still love you guys, especially you, Josh. So you gotta make sure you can put on the table. But yeah, hey, thank you. You're doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> yes, please follow. Please follow my buddy. Josh, come on. Uh, let me read some of this here. So I don't get how Twitch is running a profit. If it costs them 1000 for 100 CCU, that means each viewer would be paying $10 to break even. Yeah, I don't know how they did this math, but we have some pretty good takes here from the community. First off, we have Pocket. Uh, Pocket puts out, she says, uh, when it comes to partnership splits, Twitch takes 50%, YouTube takes 30%, OnlyFans takes 20%, Fans, it takes 20%, Patreon takes between 5 12%, da 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 Basically showing that Twitch is pretty much the worst. Um... But also Patreon only doing five to twelve percent. I mean, you know, so you guys, guys, we talked about this yesterday. I think briefly too. Was it yesterday? Live stream yesterday? No, I didn't. Ah, oh, we. So anyways, <laughs> it was a birthday yesterday. That's right. <laughs> so, dang, old's kicking in fast. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, Patreon doesn't host anything other than pictures and text. So for them, running a five to twelve percent a cut. It, it, it kind of makes sense. They're not going to run 50%. Um, Twitch taking 50% versus YouTube taking 30%. Uh, this, I mean, this, looks, this looks bad on Twitch. We know that Amazon owns Twitch. We know that Alphabet owns YouTube. Um, and so we know that these there's a larger pot of money that they technically have access to. But as we've seen with like Tencent and, uh, uh, and um, Fanbyte closing down, it's like it doesn't matter... If like there's a bigger pot of gold that's accessible, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's yours, right? You have to contribute to the pot of gold. You can't just keep taking from the pot of gold, otherwise they're gonna let you go. That's the ten cent way, and that's why some. That's why when I see people talk about, oh man, it's a billion dollar company, why can't they do it? Because that's how they run a company, right? They're just gonna they're gonna shut them down, and so it's still a bad look because YouTube as like Google's like, oh yeah, YouTube doesn't make any money or very little. But fuck it. It's a loss leader. We're going to let them to continue not make money because we are the industry standard and we're going to keep doing this. Whereas Amazon is taking the stance, I mean, clearly, where they're saying, no, nah, man, you got to be profitable, man. We can't, we can't, no. You think you can have some of this? No, 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 no. <laughs> See, Mike got that sun onset old. Jeez, I know, it just kicks right in, man, randomly. Uh, Bog Otter, I love this. All my, all, my, all my peers and shit come up with some good takes. I love it. Uh, this Bog Otter says, this part kills me. First, they talk about published rates. And this is all in the, uh, all in the article here, um, of the blog post. It says, they talk about published rates, which means they don't pay that amount. It's Amazon Web Services and 
uh, uh, and they are owned by Amazon. Secondly, why use 200 hours a month as your example? That's almost seven hours of streaming per day, every day. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And so it's true. It says every corner of the world is expensive. To use so using the published rates for Amazon Web Service Interactive Video Services, which is essentially Twitch video, live video costs 100 CCU streamer who streams 200 hours a month. Or are more than a thousand dollars per month. We don't typically talk about that because, frankly, thank you. Uh, well, it's a lie. It's a fucking lie. If if Amazon is literally charging the published price for Twitch, then there is something seriously wrong with whatever fucking weird integration deal, whatever, however Twitch is involved with Amazon, wholly owned, right? You would think they would access these things, access to these things. It's ridiculous. So Amazon took a loss for decades for turning a profit, and look at them now. Baseline pricing. Be, yeah, so that that really does stand out as a load of shit. Like, <laughs> it's kind of a load of shit. Um, YouTube can use live feed into normal vids and make ad revenue there. It's about a whole ecosystem. And, well, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Twitch has had plenty, ample time, plenty, plenty, plenty time to, to build out a system that helps discoverability for things other than live streams so they can have evergreen content that just continually makes money. They built all these clips. And as we heard briefly when we jumped into this uh, this Twitter Spaces event that's happening with a bunch of, uh, allegedly a bunch of like ex-employees, you know, some people are claiming back in 2018, they built a clip system or just, they finished developing on the clip system and then they basically never touched it again. And so, and it's like, it's like, well, you know, whether or not that's true, it kind of shows. Right. We have clips and nothing's really changed about clips other than you better delete all the ones from prior to blank because you might get your account banned because of these past things, whatever. So, yeah, Twitch is 100 percent like sitting, just resting on their laurels as if like they're going to continue to be like, successful, just providing a live platform and literally nothing else. I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon charges Twitch full price. Every yes sounds like a very Amazon thing to do by charges. I mean, counts it against their PL yeah, it's it's true. Yeah, at the very end, they could basically come down and say, you know, um, at the very, all this money that you made. Oh, by the way, minus <laughs> minus the services or whatever provided by the parent company. Yeah, it's it's entirely possible. Entirely possible. But whose fault? That's not our fault, man. Why do we got to be punished for this? We're the ones that are bringing the bringing the the content uh, and bringing ev basically everything. We bring everything to Twitch. We bring everything to Twitch. So. To, to take this stance on what is essentially just a top, you know, probably top 1%, 2% of people are going to be negatively impacted by this. At least I hope it's a small percentage because otherwise, what the fuck am I doing? Um, then, yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did not excuse it. Yeah, thank you. Well, they can uh, put anything on the balance shit to justify other decisions. What point does Amazon pull Prime, I wonder? So that's so, so that's what we were talking about, right? Like that's, uh, that is potentially on the chopping block. We don't know. I mean, it could happen. It also could just not happen. <laughs> Oh man. So, uh, uh, they did say though, as a positive, uh, some kind of a positive out of this, right? They said, listen, we are, we are lowering our payout threshold to $50. So now if you, cause before you had to make at least a hundred dollars in order to reach, get a payment out of uh, Twitch. So now they're lowering it to 50. That'll make up for all the 70, 30 shit. <laughs> uh, AK might be on cameo when, oh man, I know I should, huh? I should. Texas is on there. I think Texas is on there. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, what is it? John Taffer's on there. John Taffer from uh, 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 Bar Rescue. He's on there. What's up? Hell yeah. <laughs> Darnell Cameo. Oh, Jesus. I'll probably actually get DMCA'd for that. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Meanwhile, through all of this bullshittery that's happening with Twitch, all this negative, one negative thing after another. And even the gambling thing was like a half positive because they only took care of one type of gambling and obviously not the other type that, you know, t was 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 having the largest impact on its, on its creators, the Sliker situation. Um, but they have, I mean, they have, they have their own uh, a foot in the door there with the NFL contract that they have. So they're not going to get too close to doing anything with their, uh, uh, with their sports side. Uh, but people actually like John Taffer, Mike. Dang! <laughs> Shut it down! Shut it all down! Fucking love that guy. Uh, it's kind of what happened to Blizzard. A giant pressure seal broke. 
So, so YouTube does have, um, no, they, sorry, blah, blah, blah. so YouTube did make an announcement and it's a good one. It says YouTube creators. It says monetization via rev share is coming. Shorts creators, uh, to shorts, sorry, creators 45%, YouTube 55%. Woo, woo, woo. With this, we're adding an additional pathway to, uh, the YouTube partnership program. 10 million shorts views, 1,000 subs over 90 days. There is, there's more too. Uh, this is. It's good to not be a Twitch employee. Ah, so DJ Wee is speaking now in the Twitter space. Nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, this is a good this is a good change if you make if you make content on Twitch, if you make specifically, I'm sorry, YouTube, if you make specifically shorts on on YouTube, which everybody is going in that direction. Everybody's trying to compete with TikTok. Instagram's got Reels. YouTube's got Shorts, and so. But previously, you could not get, and you you do not have a path towards a partnership using shorts uh and you do not get revenue off of shorts and so this was a big deal because you know like they wanted to push shorts but they didn't want to pay anybody for it and they didn't want to give you any benefits in order to do it they're kind of just like well yeah you're gonna make it right because everybody's making it just post your tiktok over here it'll be fine i can tell you how many times initially i would go through uh, uh youtube shorts and i see nothing about reposted tiktoks um <laughs> <laughs> yes, Josh. TikTok did it first, or whatever. No, no, it's not true. It's not true. Vine, <laughs> Vine. Everyone wants to be like Vine. That's what it is. But there's one more thing, though. Hold on. And this makes me think. Oh man, smart. So they have the bottom is to create with music and earn. So they actually are gonna release a um a built-in music licensing, however they're gonna do it, service. So if you wanna use songs or whatever for your shorts, uh, or your, yeah, shorts, sorry, uh, then you could use licensed songs legally, technically. Now, the way it works on like Instagram and TikTok is you post your video, use whatever song you want, and if it, uh, it disappears, then <laughs> then it was the wrong song but most of the time it just tags the song and so like if you check like a a, a reel on uh, on instagram if there's a song that's used you could just click on the song and go to it just like tiktok you click on the song and you go to it um and i've used I, i've started just kind of dabble with using like like just random like clearly copyrighted songs i should not be using and it just tags them and says yeah more from this artist it's like, okay, that's a cool workaround. Now I can actually use good music instead of this royalty-free bullshit in order to bring it over, uh, in order to make content. And so in this case, YouTube is like, well, they have a slightly different deal, but still, we know that we don't want to have a whole bunch of creators making a bunch of uh, shorts using the same fucking song from their music library. And there's plenty of songs in the music library that you guys have absolutely heard before. Uh, and so they're trying to open up to make it uh, more reasonable for people to license songs and use in their shorts. It's still going to be a kind of a pain in the ass, I guess, because like you have to find the music to use for your setup. And a lot of a lot of these shorts and reels and, and TikToks, they're heavily dependent on the music. The editing is dependent on the music. Uh, everything is dependent on the music. And so, you know, if you only have access to a certain number of songs, then that's a lot of inspiration just gone. And so what you end up using these songs for is essentially just background music, nothing that necessarily impacts the actual aesthetic and the editing of the video itself. And so you lose those types of videos, essentially it helps shape like the kind of the creator culture because people aren't going to be making like dance reels and all that shit uh, because they can't get any random hot song on the market and put it in there because maybe it's not available on their licensing service. So you see how this kind of could change the creative culture that would develop from, you know, YouTube shorts. Essentially, it's going to make it different from TikTok, of course, um, but Maybe only in a minor way. It depends on how many songs you have access to. You mean like every YouTube video that uses the exact same song for intros, outros, cuts? Yeah. Doom, doom, doom. 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 I know you guys have heard this song before. <laughs> how long have we been going? Has it been an hour? We're not even done yet. <laughs> Damn it. We're not even done yet. Oh, God. All right. Moving on. Whoo. Ah. 
there was a leak on top of all this bullshit. There was a huge leak for Grand Theft Auto 6. That's 6. 6. Uh, start off in the forums here. GTA forums. Yes! Oh yeah, now. Just so you're warned, we're not going to show any copyrighted co or leaked content here. We're not doing any of that. <laughs> so, but we can at least see the origins of this and of course everything that happened afterwards. You'll be showing the videos, right? <laughs> so, Teapot Uber Hacker, somebody who in a roundabout way is claiming that they're the ones that did the Uber hack that happened uh, last week. Uh, week before last week i can't remember when <laughs> um at post state it says here are 90 footage slash clips from gta 6 it's possible i could leak more data soon gta 5 and 6 source code and assets gta 6 testing build um and included was links to content and everything probably like a mega link or something like that uh and it uh, it exploded because Grand Theft Auto 5 is still one of the biggest games pretty much of all time. Uh, and so a Grand Theft Auto 6 being leaked is going to be massive, especially since it's already been so many years since a, since a Grand Theft Auto release has come out. Um, now, what what you saw, if you saw the, some of the some of the leaks that came out was clearly unfinished stuff, clearly unfinished stuff, um, uh, missing textures, all that shit. And uh, and it's. <laughs> Apparently, this person like social engineered their way into a Slack channel that was being used to post uh, some of this content and all that. And they basically spent their time just collecting all this footage and everything. Um, so, yeah, uh, protect your Slacks or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you can fix that. Um, so, yeah, the, the, here we go. Verge covers it. It's huge, huge, huge. Uh, Massive leak shows early footage of Grand Theft Auto 6. This is not from Grand Theft Auto 6. Um, uh, 90 videos, three gigabyte file full of footage. Um, let me see the the actual feed. There was a, there was a, a Twitter account that was dedicated to posting it that actually disappeared. Account suspended. Uh, there is a Reddit. There was a Reddit thread on uh, gaming leaks and rumors, uh, and that's how you know it's confirmed when the shit just disappears. Uh, removed in Reddit in response to cop by say removed by Reddit in response to copyright notice. Um, yeah, this is perfect. Come on, Rockstar, take this down. Prove that it's real. <laughs> So yeah, it was a um, uh, it, it has disappeared. There's, I mean, there's tons and tons. there's good takes and bad takes, and there was a lot of bad takes. Uh, Alana Pierce was one of the good takes, uh, and she's. I mean, I think she reflects what every like sane person would probably think. It's like leaks are awful for everybody, including exciting fans uh, who are often looking at an unfinished product and creating totally false expectations based upon that. Everyone loses. It just sucks. The cycle of show us the game already, and then ooh, it looks awful. Also, just repeatedly kills off any hope I have of a future where game developers can be much more candid with their audiences about how games are made. Um, Rockstar with his finger on the DMCA trigger. Yeah, we got to be careful. Uh, and it's true. It's true. Yeah, when you're working on something, it gets leaked early. Then you're just kind of... And then you get fucking chastised for being unfinished. It's like, well, of course it's unfinished, dude. It's unfinished. For fuck's sake. And then you have people like this who, like, I mean, represent clearly a sizable number of people. I mean, if you find one, you're going <laughs> to probably fucking more. Uh, this guy says, I love, this is Jeff Keen. He's the one I made um, space, d -d 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 unfortunate spaceman, right? I follow him on Twitter and he had a great take on this. He says, have you ever been, have you ever been this wrong about anything before? So this is a comment by a guy, average guy says, if you knew how game development goes, you'd know that visuals are one of the first things done. This game is four years into planning and development. What you see is almost exactly what you will get. The next year is, miss, is mission coding and debugging, all back end stuff. It does look like ass, bro. Jesus Christ. Gamers can be so impatient. Uh, Get, wait, Jesse Cox even talked about YouTube people and leaked shit that is under NDA. What? Who? Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, when I build a house, I start with the wallpapers first. Yeah! <laughs> My games are just blocks. So he didn't hack Rockstar. He stole files from chat room. He sneaked into essentially what did he hope to achieve anyway? I mean, probably just to leak the stuff, really. You know, just basically just want to leak it, uh, leak the uh, whatever he could collect. Uh, whatever his motivations were, it doesn't really matter. Like, he got the stuff, he got it out. I mean, you know, however, if he social engineered his way in, or maybe somebody was 
working at Starbucks and they had their six screens set up at fucking Starbucks. And so one of them had the Slack stuff up. So somebody was able to social engineer their way in that way. I don't know. But <laughs> uh, he has no experience in game development, thinks he knows how it works. And this is a lot of people. There's a lot of people that have this like this mindset. Where they think they know, but they don't fucking know. They think they know, but they're so far off. They end up getting quote retweeted and then that person ends up fucking with 27,000 likes because that's how many people recognize that you are fucking stupid. Um, just wants a shiny thing and show it off. Yep, yep, yep. How game design works. Oh, this is probably good. Let me see. I'm building a new house. We're about, we're about half done. Whoa, that's awesome. I want to see what some people are think half done means. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, half done actually means. Damn, it looks like shit. The wood looks so dated. You're going to have to hard time, hard time keeping heating with no windows. And you're going to get wet when it rains. What kind of animal doesn't have a toilet? See? Damn. <laughs> Jesus, man. Yeah, it hits the nail on the head. Uh, <laughs> what? I'm even. Shut up, fat face. That's how people be acting all the time. Yeah, all the fucking time. Uh, devs, devs show, <laughs> okay, <laughs> devs show off how bad early game builds look after moans about GTA 6 visuals, oh man, so he says graphics are the first thing finished in a video game, and Control won multiple awards for excellence of graphics, here's footage from the beginning of the development, yeah, just a bunch of squares, just a bunch of squares, <laughs> whoa, that looks like shit, usually the graphics are the first thing done, man, what a fucking idiot, I didn't check his feed to see if it still exists, but hopefully he fucking deleted the shit out of it because goddamn, goddamn. So Rockstar does, he, they do acknowledge that uh, there was a leak. It says, we recently suffered a network intrusion in which unauthorized third party illegally accessed and downloaded confidential information from our systems, including early development footage for the next Grand Theft Auto. At this time, we do not anticipate any disruption uh, of, to our live game services, nor any long-term uh, effects on the development of our ongoing projects uh, and they're disappointed. Yeah, it says our work on next Grand Theft Auto game will continue as planned and we remain committed as ever. Uh, I said we will update everyone very soon. Of course, we'll properly introduce you to the next to this next game when it's ready. Um, as is everything takes the longest. Yeah, I'm hoping that the original poster is a troll. If you see one BTS video of a game, uh, you would know the visuals are basic. Yeah, it has to be a troll. But man, some of those takes, some of those people are fucking for reals though. I mean, you, so you don't know if that person's if serious or not. You have no idea. So, I mean, this pretty much also confirms that it was not like a, a, it was not like a database intrusion where like some things might be, you know, uh, at risk, like, you know, uh, customer information or whatever. Uh, so this pretty much confirms that, yeah, it's, it's something else. And what I've read is that it was a slack. It was a slack uh, uh, because of some of the videos where they looked. Um, they had like a slack overlay or something. There was something that basically was like, oh, yeah, this person got it from slack, essentially. Um and so, yeah, basically, yeah, they basically guy got in there and was able to collect all this stuff up. It was Slack shares between employees is showing things. Yeah, there you go. So, so yeah, they're, they're saying that, um, you know, we want to continue. We're going to continue working on it as if nothing happened, but we're just fucking bummed about it. Uh, they also submitted, I think Rockstar Take Two, I think earlier today, submitted a, a form to, uh, to somebody for basically for their shareholders. Uh, and it was a form they have to submit to show that a major thing has, has happened um, and we're alerting you because legally we have to alert you when a major thing happens to something you're investing in. And so they submitted that to let them know that we're still working on it. None of that has changed, but you should know. And this, this thing actually has 1 million likes, 1 million and one. Oh man. So yeah, just a bad, 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 bad day for, uh, uh, or week for Grand Theft Auto, uh, the rockstar developers and everything. Um, <laughs> I'm ready to see the completed game. Love rockstar games. Oh yeah. So the source code being released isn't true. So the only the only evidence I found of any mention of source code being released was the original post where he says it's possible I could leak more data soon. GTA five and six source code and the assets, including GTA six test build. I'll zoom in a little bit for you to see that. Um, so this is the only place where I see it. It could, it could have existed on like the Twitter account that was nuked or the uh, Reddit uh, stuff that was nuked. I didn't see anything anywhere else, but you know, unless it leaks, we don't really know. Let's just hope it doesn't. Let's just honestly hope it doesn't. <laughs> Excuse me. Because like I said, it's, 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 it's going to cause nothing but issues for people who actually want to play the game. Uh, I, it's going to be, it's going to be the biggest game since Grand Theft Auto 5. So, 
uh, you know, we don't want to jeopardize that in any way. I know we all like drama. I know we all like drama. We we do, but let's 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 let the drama like uh, circle around actual planned released features and not <laughs> the all this half finished stuff that nobody should be seeing. <laughs> so much rumor. This is why I get my news here. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I went right to the source, man. Right to the forums. Um, but yeah, God. <laughs> This is popular post. How funny. That was Sunday. Yeah, wow, that was Sunday. It's just, just a couple days ago. What? Uh, uh, moving on. We talked about uh, Andrew Tate after a news episode. Um, I was going to talk about it on news, and I kind of wish I would have now. I'm fairly certain we didn't. Uh, but Andrew Tate is, a, um, is an influencer. Fuck that guy already. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's an influencer who is uh, a, a who is a self-proclaimed misogynist. Um, he's just all around like a huge, massive piece of shit. Uh, I don't know if he's still MMA or whatever, but he used to be an MMA. Anyways, this guy basically just like he goes on like you know, he has podcasts, he goes on podcast shows, whatever, and just talks about how fucking women suck and shit and needs to be in the kitchen and all that stuff. Basically, yeah, he's a cunt. He's a, he's a cunt. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and so uh, uh, G2. G2 Esports, uh, uh, their uh, founder, CEO, uh, Carlos, was posted a video from a party they attended, and you can see, right, let's we'll play the whole clip here, you can see, and then right over oh, there is Andrew Tate. So... Hell no, the, the G2 shit. <laughs> so naturally, people see this, right? People see this and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Yeah, it's like, it's my, it's like oh no, I like this one. Just flat out, oh no. <laughs> uh, because yeah, here's your here's your guy here hanging out with uh, with Andrew Tate. Just a fucking huge asshole. Um, I've not seen worse recently, but the, when I knew check was going on with Alex Jones. No, you don't, you don't have to do that. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Uh, so obviously there was a lot of there was a lot of kickback here. A lot of people were uh, were really upset about this, you know, naturally and shit. Um, and Carlos responds, and he says uh, he says nobody will ever be able to police my friendships. I draw my line here. I party with whoever the fuck I want. Wow, <laughs> so much edge. Oh my god, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so he doubles down. He doubles down on this now. Uh, <laughs> People could shoot, also ignore whoever the fuck they want. Um, he doubles down on it. And then very quickly, I don't know, but very quickly, but, um, well, I guess very quickly, all this happened in the span of like 24 hours or so. Uh, he posts this, as many G2 fans were let down this weekend, which created confusion about what I stand for. It has always been my consistent target to stand for absolute quality of opportunity, regardless of who you are and where you came from, which is what gaming is all about. Make no mistake, my life has w was full of learnings and I had my fair share of situations I got into in the past. I failed to read the room right, feel terrible at the discussions it created, and will stand up and accept my consequ the consequences in full. Uh, you know you know who this guy is? He runs a very, 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 very large esports uh, uh, entity. This is G2 Esports. They have like a million something, yeah, 1.5 million followers. Uh, they do Valorant, they do CSGO, they do tons, tons and tons of shit. The language changed pretty quickly, yeah, exactly. So this is from uh, from the official uh, G2 Esports uh, Twitter. It says, hey, G2 Army, last night we failed you. The actions of our CEO spoke a language in contrast, so our contrast with the values and the culture G2 lives by and strives for. That language, just so you guys know, is I party with whatever the fuck I want, all right? <laughs> it says, after our internal discussion, Carlos and I our supervisory board have mutually agreed that he will take eight weeks of leave as CEO and suspend his earnings during that time. Thank you to the G2 Army. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, <clears throat> so this is like, uh, 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 this is really, really, really like poorly timed on his part. I mean, there's never a good time to be hanging out with like a known asshole, but you know, definitely chose like the worst because currently there's an all women's Valorant uh, uh, competition going on right now. And so their entire feed is basically championing women in esports basically basically except for that guy <laughs> and then you just keep scrolling and then it's like woman woman women esports women esports women esports women esports by the way we're sorry that our dude's a piece of shit hanging out with misogynist <laughs> 
But, 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 but the truth shall set you free, though. Just because he said that he's sorry doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, I say he posted that statement. It was still liking. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's what exactly we're going for. This is where you know whether or not he really, truly means it. Right. Um, we scroll down here. We can see. Uh, let me see. Let's see, he took an hour to deny step down. Uh, where the fuck is? Let's see, mistakes can happen. Nobody. Uh, man spends the night liking pro tape tweets, then gets told by his PR team board, "You have to tweet this." Yeah, see, and he liked this. He basically liked this, saying, "Oh yeah, of course." Uh, <laughs> uh, you out here saying what everyone else is afraid to say, the truth. Yeah. So if you look at his look at his likes, you're a free man with your life, whatever. If you care about who this guy parties with, you have misaligned priorities. Yeah. So he may have he may have said one thing, or somebody may have said something, or told him that he has to post something, but he absolutely does not mean it. So, would people lie on the internet? I know, and so obviously too, man. Like, come on, we could see your fucking likes, guy. Okay, we could see, we could see your likes. Continue to party wherever the fuck you want. Do not leave these mortals to, uh, to tell you what to do, man. They're just fans, and they left. They were never really real fans. Is that how he feels? <laughs> Is that how he feels? I mean, keep in mind, like I said, they're they're. They're championing an all women's fucking esports event right fucking now, okay? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude. So yeah, the bad look. That's a bad look. Did you get this link? What is this? Is this related to the story? Let me see. Let me check it out first. Uh oh, here we go. Valorant sources told me that G2 is out of franchising for the next year because of the recent controversy. G2 had a spot locked in NA, but Riot had an emergency meeting and decided otherwise. Yeah, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Confirmed by George. New recent developments about pointing. You see that G2 being out of contention for any partnership league next year. Damn. Damn. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, that's that's the find out part of the fucking around, right? Lots of people who don't blindly follow you in an unquestioning matter. Yeah, rip fucking contracts for sure. Uh, and you know, Riot, Riot's already walking on eggshells with this stuff because they have their own bullshit that they, they're dealing with, with uh, uh, with California uh, legal shit related to like such harassment in the workplace and all that stuff. So so yeah, they're, they're going to do whatever they can to not be associated with anybody, even remotely associated as, with somebody especially like Andrew Tate. Um, but... This is also a huge L for uh, anybody who is competing under the G2 umbrella. Like that's that's something that we need to keep in mind as well. Like these these are people who work their fucking ass off and to lose a contract and lose potential money or exposure or fame or wins or whatever uh, is pretty fucking damning for those guys. Yeah, the DFE, yeah, that's exactly the D Department of whatever, whatever DFH is, DEFH is uh, uh, I actually have a whole bunch of articles on that saved just in case that comes up again. <laughs> Uh, the best part is next time he sees Tate, he's gonna be like, "Dude, I can't talk to you. you Costing money," and that's how you end all these people. P people turn to make the rats eat each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, you can hang out with whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, dude. And then you just like you know not run this company anymore, I guess, or just not make money or whatever. This means there's also a spot open now. Maybe the gamers of G2 can make a new org and get that spot. It's a lot of money though. It's a lot of money involved, as you know, right? Like it's yeah. They I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they'll be able just to like switch and just you know do whatever, but a lot of contracts and all that stuff. So oh man, that's the worst part of this whole thing. Fuck, I didn't see that and shit, it's a bummer. God. Um, moving on. There's no segue for this, but. I gotta set this up though. I gotta I gotta give you guys the history. We're going back. The year is 2022. The <laughs> the month is September. It's like the fourth or something like that. Okay. Um and Magnus Carlson, world chess champion, got documentaries and shit on him. Pretty big Twitch streamer as well. Uh, faces off against Hans Niemann, taking you way back. Uh, Hans Niemann, who is uh, a U.S.-based um, uh, chess champion or chess competitor, uh, who is uh, who beat Magnus for the first time in like I guess I don't know how many games, like 50 or 80 something consecutive games. Um, and so he ends up. So Magnus ends up losing to this essentially a newcomer, right? Was at the bottom of the bracket ends up beating the, the winner of the bracket or the, the best of all time. Um, and that ends that's, that's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big deal. So uh, Magnus, after this event, 
you knew how to pick them? Thanks. <laughs> so after this event, uh, he posts, he says, I've withdrawn from a tournament. I've always enjoyed playing in the STL chess club. What is it? A St. Louis chess club. And I hope to be back in the future. And then he posts this video here. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. <laughs> so, he says, if I speak, I will be in big trouble. Okay? So he doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything. Then, there's this bizarre post that pops up on Reddit. And of course, it makes it to like, you know, the, the news starts picking up and everything like that. But there's this post that shows up. And it says, the real answer is ele actually elementary. Magnus Carlson, the one who, who withdrew, who lost and withdrew, he says, cheats. He's always had anal beads up his butt, maybe for the past 10 years. That's how he's been dominating the entire field of players. There was a slight slip during the time he played Karuna because he was so drunk he couldn't feel the vibrations well and ended up losing a game. His team decided to turn up the vibrations to max, and that's how Magnus survived the encounter. It's just fucking weird story that gets posted. And he says, afterwards, Magnus withdrew from the tournament, but not before putting out a vague tweet. And so he said, little did he know, the real thief. Well, here we go. Uh, so little did he know. Hold on, let me, let me keep reading the rest here, sorry. Uh, I know this story, but I gotta get you guys caught up. So recently, Magnus realized the ANLB's computer design he created had been stolen. Of course, he couldn't come clean about cheating, so he jumped up the excuse of being bored so he couldn't lose, so he wouldn't lose a world champions to Nepo, so he suspects to have stolen, uh, who he suspects to have stolen the ANLB design after being humiliated prior to contest, blah, 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 blah. So the only thing you know, the real thief was cocky supervillain Hans. It's just fucking weird fanfic, okay? <laughs> This wasn't the direction I was expecting. Anal B comm units. Yeah. So it says, uh, it says Magnus withdrew from the tournament, but not before putting out a vague tweet uh, while everyone interpreted his hands cheating. Hans cheating. Uh, in reality, Magnus is also cheating, but can't release defin definitive, definite proof because uh, since he'd also be in big trouble. So uh, this was this was a random post on, on uh, Reddit. Elon fucking Musk's Musk, who who has followed chess, right? He's tweeted about chess stuff related on Twitch before. He retweeted. It says it's since been deleted. Uh, something like Occam's Razor is the most obvious answer, whatever, right? So Elon Musk retweets that that there could be some credence to the story that <laughs> that Hans is using a remote anal bead actuator. To help him win games that previously belonged to Demarcus. So, <laughs> so of course, this is like massive amplification because it's fucking Elon Musk, okay? Massive amplification. Uh, uh, and <laughs> there's tons of speculation. People are now like hardcore analyzing uh, 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 Hans' actual skill level. So we see these like charts. It's like, I've analyzed Hans Neiman's performance since January 2021 and found interesting results. He has gained the most rating points of any GM level player since 2021 by a lot. Impressive or cheating. Hmm. And so of course we have, look at this, there he goes, performance. Wow, okay, yeah, look at that. Oh man, look at, yeah, there you go. So by the numbers, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is why the internet is a mistake. I mean, because everybody, everybody's got the data, man. Everyone's got to get the data. Um, so he did interview the. He did, he did uh, uh, talk about this a little bit during an interview. I have a time stamp here. Check it out. Check it out. Unfortunately, now there has been a targeted attack, and uh, some recent events have made it really, really difficult for me to not stop speaking. After the game against Magnus, obviously Magnus uh, puts his tweet clearly some insinuations, and then everyone starts to, to pile. I get uh, an email from chess.com saying that they've privately removed access to my chess.com account, and that they have uninvited me from the Global Chess Championship. Now, three days ago, I met with someone very high up in chess.com at the Stingfield Cup, had amazing, amazing words. But because of this game against Magnus, because of what he said, they have decided to completely remove me from the website. Now this, if this is, be and now, this is after I have already fully admitted, and they have the best cheat detection in the world. They know that I'm not a cheater, and that I have given, I give everything to chess. I work so hard, and I, I, chess is my entire life, okay? So, so, he obviously denies the claims, and he's like, and he's showing, and just so you guys know, like, I've watched a few interviews with this guy now, like, he, if he's cheating, 
he seems like a nice guy, okay? <laughs> like, he's pissed. He's pissed, right? Like, he, because, like, you know, he talks about it, uh, uh, he talks about it elsewhere in this video. He's like, you know, Magnus was like my hero, and then this happens, and then I get shunned by chess.com purely because I won a match and because there was some insinuation that I might have been cheating or something. Uh, he does admit that he did cheat when he was like between like 12 and 16. He cheated a couple times or something. Now he is like 18 or 19, so. Um, and so, so it's, it's only a few years ago, or whatever. 2019, tremendous pressure for a young man. Yeah, oh yeah. You imagine the entire internet assuming that you have like a fucking remote anal bead detonator in your ass at all times? Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> a cheater, cheater, mad that people think he's cheating. More news at 11. Well, we don't know. We don't know if he's cheating. But like, I, I watch, again, I watched his whole interview. Like, I mean, if anything, he's the nicest guy to have ever cheated. He's heated here. But in all other parts of the interview, he talks about, you know, his upbringing and again, chess and all that stuff. He does say, he says in this interview, he says he's cheated before. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't, he never cheated in any game for, uh, uh, that was uh, uh, associated with money. He just cheated online. Um, who volunteers to find out? I'm like, you sold all over my desk. <laughs> uh, so yeah, stories are everywhere. I mean, it's like uh, every fucking where. Vibrating butt toys are exactly what chess needs. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He's 19 years old and Rolling Stone is doing an article covering a rumor that you might have something in your ass. Like, come on. What the fuck? <laughs> he just wants to play chess. That's what it looks like to me. If he's cheating, then fine. He's an asshole. He cheated. Stupid kid. Whatever. Fuck. What do beads have to do with chess? <laughs> well, it's shaped like a bishop, I think. You know, it's kind of the thing. Um, <laughs> it's not like a rook. That would hurt. That rook would hurt, man. <laughs> uh, so... So we fast forward to uh, a recent tournament happening right now, actually. Um, and uh, uh, we get Marcus and Hans facing off again. And then this, this, this happens his, here. This is his main move. D4, knight, f6, c4. Yeah, definitely. And what? No. What? what? No. So I know it might be hard to see, but... Well, you see him gone, but Hans basically, I'm sorry, Marcus just it? made one move and then conceded We're and then an closed off his this. camera and shut it down and just left. Magnus Carlsen just resigned, got up and left, switched off his camera. Oh, did I say Marcus? Oh, sorry. That's all we know right now. That's DJ Wheat, man. Still on the mind, you know? So handsome. Uh, <laughs> he rage quit. He po he won one move and then he quit. I don't brought up some kind of protest or something. So, um, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of people that are looking at this and they're like, well, hold on a second. This makes chess look bad now, right? Like this, this makes chess look bad. Um, he did, he backed out of this, but, but well, first of all, grandmasters or whatever, chess masters are upset. Uh, here's one. Uh, this is uh, Kasparov. He's Russian uh, chess grandmaster, uh, like a 13-time champion or something like that. He says, I will not delve into the ugly insinuations of the matter now, but I must remark on what we do know. Do know. World chess champion Magnus Carlsen withdrew from the world's premier uh, tournament in St. Louis, an act with no precedence. Oh, sorry. This is over the first in incident, by the way. Uh, with no precedent in the past 50 years, and his explanation is acquired. Uh, and it says Carlson's withdrawal was a blow to chess fans, his colleagues at the tournament, da 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 da. Uh, and he's saying uh, that, you know, so, apparently chess.com also banned the young American player and like something needs to happen. This is all over the first, this is regarding the first uh, 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 incident. The most recent incident is that's happened like day over yesterday. Yeah, day over yesterday, for fuck's sake. Um, he had to make sure he was shown in the tournament before he left. <laughs> he just had to show his face and get out of there. Uh, now, Magnus was interviewed today, actually, because uh, the tournament, again, is happening in and real time. So he was interviewed. This is from uh, earlier today. Uh, this interviewer is trying to trying to get something out of him in relation to the uh, the cheating uh, accusations. You mentioned um, uh, a name there. I think maybe a trainer of Hans uh, Niemann that he's doing um, a good job. Um, can you say some more about that? Is, is that because you think he's helping Hans in the games? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I will not say anything more uh, about uh, about that subject. So this is like his fifth time, and she keeps trying. Will you at some point make a comment on all the fuss that is going on? Uh, yeah, I hope to hope to say a little bit more after uh, after the tournaments. Mm -hmm. So he dan he dances around, and she asked him like twenty times this interview. Man, I was looking for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so she's trying to get out of him some kind of comment on this now keep in mind there's nowhere that i could find where magnus uh, himself said that this was something that hans was doing you know the whole thing um <laughs> so he's not commenting on it at all because technically he didn't start the rumor all he did was say that he can't say anything whatever and we assume that he's doing it because he thinks that the other person is cheating, right? But the way that they're cheating is pure speculation. It's pure speculation. We don't know for sure. It's like, uh, what is this? Overall, this might actually be the best thing that ever happened to chess. The game is really boring for outsiders and nothing normally happens that's like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Team Anal Bees was trending on Twitter. Jesus. Uh, so uh, the tournament's happening right now. On the 23rd, I actually have the. Hold on. I have the. Uh, here we go. Here's the current standings. Um, so Magnus Magnus on uh, tomorrow is going to face up against uh, Levon Ar Aronian, whoever that is. Uh, and uh, Hans is going to be facing against somebody else. So it's very possible that we could eventually see um, another Magnus versus Hans, depending on how. Uh, how both of them perform in the uh, in the finals here. <laughs> so we'll see if he maintains that same protest or what. But uh, yeah, it's very possible, especially given because he backed out of the one, but then he ended up winning all the other games or whatever. So like backing out of one match really wasn't uh, going to hurt him at all. Hey, bud, what's up? What's up? How do you know I was there? How? Because I heard you. What did I say? You, you, I don't, I don't hear what you said, but spring can't. boob. Oh, squire pin. Oh, okay. Let me fetch my news. Good to see you. <laughs> Man, some of these stories. <laughs> I don't know. You heard that somewhere. I have no idea. <laughs> Man, I just drop out if he has a chance to beat him and his anal nemesis just quitting again. Yeah, so there is a pretty good chance that we're going to see uh, sometime over the next few days. We'll see, uh, was it was the 25th or something. Uh, we'll probably see uh, Magnus and Hans uh, face off again. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, 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 is that it? Okay, you know what? I got, I got one more. I got one more little thing I'm going to throw in there because this is, this is kind of, this is kind of neat. Listen, there's a new game out, okay? There's a new game out. Um, it's gonna be the hottest thing on Twitch. All right. It's called uh, it, it's called Trombone Champ. All right. I'll play I'll play it as a little segment here, and you get a taste of it. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to full screen it, but it's not that big. Not right now. You can check it out. That's it for the news. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out, chat. You guys are amazing. This is a long fucking video. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, you guys hang out for a second. I'll be back in a minute and we'll sign off. But uh, but yeah, thank you again for watching. It's an amazing fucking news day. You the best. Oh, you the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Say bye to chat or YouTube. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys later. See you in a second, chat.